Hi, this is Ptah Mohamed. I'm a Moroccan high school teacher of English. For our today's session, so let's start from this sentence. If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. So let's go through this sentence and then check how many parts do we have in this sentence. If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. So when you read the sentence, you find out that we have two parts. We have this one, which is part one. And we have this one, which is part two. Okay? And then when we compare between these two parts, we find that in part one we have if, but in part two we don't have if. That's why part one we call it if clause. And part number two, it is then clause which comes next, or we may call it main clause. It stands by itself. Also, when we compare between these two parts in terms of meaning, if you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. So when I say it becomes ice, what does it represent for this? So we find out that it represents the result. If you put water in the freezer, so the result, it becomes ice. This means this is the result of this, which is the cause or the condition. So, if you have this condition, which is putting water in the freezer, you have this result, which is, it becomes ice. And generally speaking, this is what we call conditional sentence. So the lesson of today is the conditional sentence. And of course the first step to start the lesson is to understand what they mean by the conditional sentence. So the conditional sentence, it is a sentence, generally speaking, in which we have two parts. Part one which is the if clause and it represents the condition. Part two which is the main clause and it represents the result. So this is what we mean by conditional sentence. Now let's go to well, let's have more details about this conditional sentence. So you have to bear in mind that when we speak about the conditional sentence, so we have different types. We have type 0, type 1, type 2, and also type 3. And of course, every type of these types is used for a specific situation or tense. It's like, for example, when we speak about type zero, it is a real situation or fact for every time. So type zero is used for a real situation of fact for every time. This means it's not restricted to time. Whenever you have this condition, so you have this result, irrespective of time. And especially when we speak about, for example, about scientific facts. For example, we have in this case, um, if you put water in the freezer so it becomes ice so 
whenever you have this condition, so you have this result. So it is tenseless. This means it can take place. It can take place every time, either in the past, the present, or the future, and, and so on. Or it's in another example, for example, when we say, uh, if you heat water until 100 degrees Celsius, so um, the result of this condition, it evaporates. And that's why we use this type. When we speak about type 1, so it is an imaginary situation for the future. So, in this case, we are talking about a condition whose results takes place in the future. An imaginary situation for the future time. For example, if I feel sick, I will call you. For example, now I'm okay, but when I feel sick, when there is this condition, I will call you in the future time. For type 2, it is an imaginary situation for the present okay so here we are talking about an imaginary situation for the present for example suppose that i am not uh, rich i am poor and i just imagine that if i have money so what would i do for example if i were rich, I would build hospitals for free services. I'm not rich, but if I were rich, I would build hospitals for free services. So it is an imaginary situation for the present time. I'm, I'm talking about something that is not real, it's just imaginary, and it is contradictory to the present uh, situation. I'm not rich, I'm poor, but if I were rich, I would build hospitals for the poor. Now let's move for type three. Type three is an imaginary situation for the past. In this case, we are talking about past activities or events or actions. And it is an imaginary situation for the past. For example, I have a friend of mine who was sick, but I didn't know about this. And when I meet my friend, so he's very angry, angry. So he didn't like my behavior that I didn't um, go to visit him and so on but I didn't know so so I say if I had known about your sickness come on I would have visited you if I had known about your sickness, I would have visited you at home or in hospital. So here I'm talking about an imaginary situation for the past time. It's, it seems like a regret. Right, so as a conclusion, you find that when we speak about the condition sentence, so we have different types, and every type is used for a specific situation. When we speak about type zero, it is used for real 
situational facts, and especially when we speak about scientific, uh, scientific facts, for every time. It is tenseless. It's not restricted to a specific time. It's like in this case. If you put water in the freezer, it becomes ice. When we speak about type 1, type 1 is used for an imaginary situation for the future. So we are talking about the result that takes place, the result of this condition that take, takes place um, in the future. It's like this. If I feel sick, I will call you. For type number 2, we are talking about an imaginary situation for the present. If I were rich, I'm not rich, but if I were rich, I would build hospitals for free services. For this case, type number three, it is an imaginary situation for the past. And here we are talking about, about past actions or activities. If I had known about your sickness, I would have visited you. Right, this is in terms of um, in terms of the mean of every type. Now let's move to the structure of every type. So when I speak about type 0, so here we have if plus u, which is the subject, plus uh, put the verb which is written in the simple present then plus what follows then we have comma then we have it which is the subject then plus the verb which is written becomes in the simple present too then plus what follows this is the grammatical structure type number zero. For the next, I have if two, if plus I subject plus the verb in simple present plus what follows, then we have comma, then we have I subject plus the verb will call the verb in simple future and then plus what follows. When we speak about type 2, so we have if plus I, which is the subject, plus the verb were in simple past, plus what follows, then we have comma, then we have subject, then we have would, then plus bell, will plus verb in their infinitive. And when I say verb their infinitive, it means verb without two. And then plus what follows. Next, we have if plus I subject plus had known the verb in past perfect plus what follows then we have comma then we have I subject then plus would plus have and then plus visited verb in past participle and then plus what follows. So generally speaking, when we speak about type zero, when we speak about the structure of the sentence, so we write the condition in the present and the result, the verb in the condition in the present and the result, also the verb is written in the present. But when we speak about type one, so the condition is written in the, the verb is written in the uh, present, and for the results, the verb is written in simple future. This means will plus verb bear infinity. When we speak about type 2, so we are talking about 
the condition must the verb in the condition must be written in the simple past and uh, for the result we put subjects plus word plus verb bear infinitive means without two for type number three the condition is written the verb is written in the past perfect and the past perfect means had plus verb in past plus simple and for the result we put uh, subjects plus would plus have plus verb in past participle so this is general comparison in terms of these types of uh, conditional sentence so we have type 0, type 1, type 2, type 3 and we talked about the meaning and when we use every type of these conditional sentences or these types of the conditional sentence and then move to talk about the structure of every type okay now let's move to speak about let's talk about the exercises So when we speak about the exercises, so we have two types of exercises. We have type, we have A and B. For exercise, you find, for example, A, what do they tell you? Write the verb between brackets in the right form and you find that they give you a conditional sentence they give you either the condition or the result and they tell you that the missing verb you have to put it in the right form this means you have to check the sentence and you should know which side and so on and then you have to put the verb in the right form or there is another type of exercise given for this lesson they tell you rewrite the following statements as suggested okay so they give you two statements two sentences and they tell you you have to rewrite them again using if okay so you have to rewrite them using if so these are the two kinds of exercise given in this lesson we will start with the first one and then move to the second right so uh, this is exercise a with the verbs between brackets in the right form so you can stop the video and try to answer by yourself and then you can go on and check your answers and also uh, have more explanation about this exercise so you can stop the video and do it by yourself because I'm going to answer this exercise and explain right so uh, let's start with the first sentence I didn't know, I didn't know that you were in a hospital if I had known about it, I visit you. So the first remark is that here we are talking about the past tense. I didn't know that you were in a hospital. And we know that type number three in the conditional sentence is linked to these past actions or activities. But let's go on to be sure of that. If I had known about it, so when I have if means this is the condition, and we have the subjects plus had known means the verb in past perfect so here we are sure that we are talking about type number three and when we know that this is type number three and we have the condition written the verb in the condition written in past perfect so for the result we put would plus have plus 
visited, right? So this is how we answer this kind of exercise. The first thing is that I try to understand or I try to find out the tense of the sentence. Are we talking about the present, the past or the future? And then I try to focus on the part that is given. If I am given the uh, condition, so I know in which tense the verb is written or in which form. If I am uh, given the results, I do the same. And then I give the other part. Let's move number two. Thanks for telling me about it. So how are we talking about uh, something, or are we talking about something that has to do with the present time? Thanks for telling me about it. I would not attend her birthday party if you remind not me. And here we have if in the middle. So it is followed by the condition that I have give, I have to, uh, in which I have to give the form of the verb. And it is preceded by the result. I would not attend. I subjects plus would plus verb in their infinity. So when we speak about the present and we have the results, we have the subjects plus would plus verb bear infinitive. So in this case, we are talking about type number two. And when we know that it is type number two, so the condition must be written in the past. So remind not should be written in the simple past. So it becomes if you did not Remind me, I would not attend her birthday party if you did not remind me. Let's move to number three. Take your umbrella because you will get wet if it rain. If we have this condition, you will get wet. And when I say we will get wet, we are talking about something or a result that will take place in the future. So in this case, we are talking about type number one, and uh, the result, the verb in the result is written in the simple future, and for verb of the condition is written in the simple present. So it rains. You will get, or take your umbrella, because you will get wet if it rains. Let's move to next. If you went to bed, earlier you be not late and here we have if this means that this is the condition and this is the result if plus subject you plus wins verb in simple past and we know that the condition the verb of the condition that is written in the simple past so here we are talking about type number two and if it is uh, type number two and the verb in the condition is written in the simple past this means here we have to put the subjects plus word plus verb bare infinitive but here we have not so it becomes would not be if you went to bed earlier you would not be late you are late you will miss the train if you hurry not you are late you will miss the train. So when I say you will miss the train again, so this is a result that will take place in the future. And this means that this is type number one. And if the verb or the result of the, the verb in the result is in the simple future, this means the verb in the condition should be in the simple present. And we have here in not. So if you do not Very. Right? So this is how we answer this kind of exercise. The, the first thing, I try to find out the tense of the sentence. And uh, when I know the tense of the sentence, so I know which type of, uh, should I use, type 1 or type 2 or type 3. And of course, type 0 is an exception. It is very limited. So we just focus on type 1, type 2, type three and when I know the tense I know the type so when I know the type so I know the structure 
of the verb. And then I try to know which part am I given. Am I given uh, part of the condition, part one or part two? And then I try to answer based on what I am given in the sentence. Okay? So this is uh, how to answer this kind of exercise. And now let's move to exercise B. Right, so this is exercise B. We write the following sentences as suggested. So we have a list of sentences and we have to rewrite them using if. Okay? So before I start answering the, this uh, exercise, so you can stop the video and try to answer it by yourself and then check your understanding and get more details about how to answer this exercise. So you can stop the video and do it by yourself and then continue. Okay, right, so for exercise like this, so the first thing that I have to do is to look for the keywords or the linking words that I have in these sentences or statements or whatsoever. For example, in sentence number one, we have because. Okay, so when I have this word, this keyword because, so it tells me that you eat fast food, this is the cause, this means that this is the condition. And when I know that this is the condition, and this condition, it is the condition of this result, right? So the first thing is to look for these keywords, or linking words, whatsoever, to know um, the relationship between these parts given in every statement. Because when I know that this is the condition and this is the result, this helps me how to put them in order when I have if, because if is all the time followed by the condition and then we have the result. And if you put if in the middle, this means it is preceded by the result and followed by the condition. Right, this is the first thing. The second thing is to check tense of the verb in the result. For example, the result we have the verb in simple future. So if the verb is written in the simple future, this means we are talking about type, type 1. Because we know that type 1 is linked to simple future. The result, um, of the result in the type 1 is written in the simple future. So we know that this is type 1, okay? And of course here we are talking about type 1, 2 and 3 because type 0 is just an exception. So just forget about it because it is used in very specific cases or situations. Right, so I know that this is the condition. This is the result based on uh, this linking word. I know, I know that this is type 1 because the result is written in the simple future. And when I know that this is type 1, this means I know that the uh, condition should be written in simple present and the result should be written in the simple future. The last thing to do is that when I want to rewrite the sentence, if it is affirmative, so I put it into the negative form and vice versa. So I have if, if is followed by the condition, you eat fast food, and I know this is type 1 simple present, so if you do not eat fast food, okay, this is the condition, what is the result? Here we have you will be fat, but in this case you will not be Fat. If you don't eat fast food, you will not be fat. Now let's move to the second example. I don't eat with you because I am not hungry. So once again we have because. Because means that this is the condition and I don't have, I don't eat with you, this is the result. Then for the result, the verb in the result is written in the simple present, don't eat with you. 
I'm going to speak about the present. So this means we are talking about type 2. Because we know that type 2 is linked to the present imaginary situations. So if is followed by the condition, I have I'm not hungry, so I should put it in the affirmative. And we know in type 2 the verb should be written in the simple past. So if I were hungry, then, come on, I, I don't eat with you. And we know that I should put I would. So it is negative, so it becomes affirmative, there is no not. And then the verb in very infinitive, I would eat with you. If I were hungry, I would eat with you. Just between brackets, some may say, why did you put were? We have I, so we have to put was. It's incorrect. So we have to put was, not were. So I just say, in this case, that the majority say that we have to put were because it is a, an imaginary situation, so we have to put were. If you put was, there is no harm in that. Right, let's move to the next example. The accident happened because the driver was driving very fast. I have because. Because means this is the cause or the condition. This is the condition and this is the result. The accident happened. Once again, I focus on the uh, tense of the verb in the result. Happened in simple past. So if it is simple past, this means we are talking about type 3. If it is type 3, so we know that the condition should be written in the uh, past perfect. For the result, we should put would plus have plus verb plus plus simple. So I have if, this is the condition, the driver was driving very fast. So if the driver, here it is affirmative, so we have to put not there. If the driver had not been driving very fast, For the result, the accident happened, but here we should put not, because this is affirmative, so we should put the negative. So the accident, and we know in type 3, so subjects plus would um, not have, and then the verb plus participle happened. If the driver had not been driving very fast, the accident would not have happened. For the next example, people don't save nature, so they will suffer from pollution. I have the word so. When I have so, this means that this is the result. And people don't save nature, so this means that this is the cause or the condition. And this is the result of this condition, that people don't save nature. So, for the result, I have the verb we suffer, means it is written in the simple future. And this means that we are talking about type 1. Type 1, the condition simple present, the result in simple, the verb in simple future. So, if this is the condition, People don't save nature, so I have to put it in simple present, negative, affirmative. So, if people save nature, okay, they have, have, they will suffer from pollution, so this means that here we have to put not. They, and type one, simple future. they will not suffer from pollution. <clears throat> if people save nature, they will not suffer, suffer from pollution. Let's move to the last example. He speaks very fast. This is why 
I don't understand him. So he speaks very fast. This is why. This is the reason. This is the cause. So this is the condition of this result. I don't understand him. Okay, so this keyword is a signal that this is the condition and this is the result of this condition. So next I have the result. The verb is written in the simple present. So if it is in the present, so we are talking about type two. So if I have the condition is that he speaks very fast, so I have to put type two verb in simple simple past. So I have speak, so I should put it in the simple past in the negative form. So if he did not speak very fast, comma, okay, I would negative so it becomes affirmative I would understand him okay if he didn't speak very fast I would understand him so this is how we answer this kind of exercises so generally speaking the first thing is looking for the keyword linking word whatsoever to differentiate between the, uh, the condition and the result. Then move to focus on the, uh, the verb tense in the result because it is a signal to know which type do I have to use. When I know which type I have to use, I know in which form should I put the, uh, uh, the verb in the condition and then the verb in the result. And once again, when I start to answer, to rewrite these statements, so I should change. If it is affirmative, becomes negative, and uh, vice versa. Right, so this is in general. The first thing we talked about the conditional sentence. So what, what does it mean, conditional sentence? So a conditional sentence, it is a sentence in which we have two parts. Part one, the if clause, which represents the condition. Part two, the then clause or the main clause which represents the result and then we talked about different types we talked about type 0 and we said that this is an exception because it's used in very specific cases or situations and uh, it is used to speak about real situation or fact for every time because it is a fact and then we have type 1 and we said that type 1 is an imaginary situation for the future because the result of this condition takes place in the future and then move to speak about type 2 and we said that type 2 is an imaginary situation for the present time and then type 3 which is an imaginary situation for the past time and next move to speak about the structure of every type and then we uh, I explain that how to answer the exercises for uh, every kind of uh, uh, questions. Maybe you have to rewrite, maybe you just put the verb in the right form and so on. That's all. See you then.